Let's stay in Nigeria now, where, as you've heard on Arise News, Twitter has removed a post by the Nigerian president, Mohamedou Buhari, for violating its rules. The tweet referred to the 1967 to 1970 Nigerian civil war and to treating those misbehaving today in, quote, the language they understand. Unquote. It follows a recent spate of attacks on offices and killings, mainly in the southeast, which the government is blaming on regional secessionists, even though they have denied that they are behind the attacks. Well, Twitter suspended President Buhari's account for 12 hours, and it has since been reinstated, but that particular tweet has been deleted. So was Twitter right to delete the president's tweet? Well, let's hear more about this and other topical issues from Prince Ade Omole, chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Voting Council and member of President Buhari's party, the All Progressives Congress, or APC. And Mr. Omole joins me now in the studio. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. What's your reaction to that uh, decision to delete the president's tweet by Twitter. Do you think they were right to do that? I think they were wrong. They were quite wrong in doing that. Um, the president has done the same. He's, he's actually done the right thing. He's actually talking tough, and the government is also acting tough. Uh, yeah, but he's talking anyway, tough they, on Twitter's platform. On, tu on uh, Twitter's platform, but again, he's, he's, he's actually saying the right thing. So I don't see any reason why that too shall have been deleted. But, but again, I think we give too much credit to this. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's a private platform. And that's why I like what the APC-led administration is doing, you know, um, going around the nation and implementing this um, tech hub so that at least the tweeters of tomorrow will be Nigerians who will also be part of that. But coming back to the decision to actually, um, you know, I believe the account was actually sort of suspended for you know, a few hours, then reinstated, and some part hours. of the uh, tweet were actually deleted. It's not the right thing. It's not fair. And I believe um, Nigerians are actually reacting to that. And I do support that, that it's a wrong thing to do at this present time. It's what we're going through. He's actually doing the right thing. And uh, we should, I think at this present time, we should support it. Well, I mean, the, you said Nigerians have been reacting to it. Correct. Uh, we've seen a lot of alarm, a lot of anger. Why do you think this particular tweet by the president hit a raw nerve across the ethnic divide in Nigeria? What, what, what's your well, sense I, of what people I, are saying? I don't believe that's true. Maybe the opposition, you may want to say the opposition, even uh, my, the other guest, the other guest that was on your show previously, did confirm that the president is actually on the right path and is doing the right things, at least ex uh, pertaining to uh, that, that um, particular tweet. So it is a wrong move, and most people I've actually spoken with today, yesterday, it's been um, all positive. They just don't understand why uh, Twitter would do that. But again, we believe it's a wrong thing, it's a wrong move, and it should have happened. Well, obviously there are different reactions to that tweet, um, but there seemed to be a sense that the president's tweet reflected what appeared to be an intention to reenact the civil war where so many people were killed, died of starvation, believe, not just in the southeast alone. What's your reaction to I that? I believe the uh, tweet was actually clear. It was actually crystal clear. Uh, there's no point trying to read meanings to it. It was crystal clear. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to deal decisively with bandits, criminality, and terrorists. And that's exactly what Nigerians want him to do. And that is what he's doing. He's actually put it out there on that platform, so there's no reason for it. And again, like you said, I think we, the message has been passed. Um, he's actually giving the orders, the matching orders. We're taking action, and he's going ahead with it. Again, uh, the, you know, the hula bully about this is just, uh, it's uncalled for. He's actually moving ahead with it. The army is doing fantastically well at this present time. And we just have to support them to ensure. You think that the, the army they are actually, and the they authorities are, actually, like are doing fantastically, fantastically well? Fantastically well. At this present time, the momentum is um, great. And further, I would like to encourage the president to say more, to do more, talk more, and also, you know, um, and, and but, also but, go but how can and do you, that. But how can you reasonably say that when there are so many kidnappings across Nigeria. Virtually every day we're hearing of students well, being that's abducted. Actually compared. Okay, so we're also hearing about, I mean, you know, Com 
extrajudicial killings all over the place. Compared I mean, to what's happened. We're seeing insurgencies. Compared to what's happened in the past and, and today, I think they're actually making improvement. They're actually working. Um, it's actually getting better. You, think, we you pray think it's getting better? It's, it's actually getting better at this present time. And we will keep praying and supporting them to do more. But I think it's actually getting better. And that's the feedback I actually got from Nigerians. Um, across board. And you remember I've been traveling across the country. Mm. I've been, to, like I was in Kaduna, I was in Lagos. Um, we've been um, in Mina, Bauchi, and you know, some other, other parts of the country. And the feedback has been now at least we can, yes, we, we are not there yet, but at least we are actually making progress at this present time. Right. And we pray that they continue to make that progress so that we can eliminate um, and the sense, banditry. And the and sense that you're getting yes. in your feedback and travels across the country is that, and the, the pages of the newspapers and, and, well, and all the things that you're seeing is that uh, Nigerians are extremely happy with what the, how the president is well, handling happiness the, is actually, the insecurity in Happiness Nigeria. is actually relative. Like I'm not saying they're extremely happy, but at least it's getting better. That's quite different. Yeah, but what, what's the evidence that it's getting better? Well, we can see all the videos. We've seen uh, the press what releases. Videos? We've the uh, videos from the um, Nigeria Army. We've seen uh, the press releases from the from the Nigeria Army. We've seen the press releases from the government, and we know that, that at least they're making progress at this present time. We're not, like I said, we're not where we should be, but at least we've left where we used to be. Okay, let's move away and that's from the that. And that is the most important thing. As let's, long as we're moving forward, right. that's the most important thing. L let's move away from that um, and talk about other topical issues. Um, you are, of course, the chairman of the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Council. Correct. Tell us a bit about that. The Diaspora Voting Council is... Um, a council that's leading the advocacy to ensure that diasporans in um, Nigerian diasporans actually have the uh, turn to actually vote in elections in Nigeria, and that's the primary purpose of actually having the council. Right. And um, to date, what uh, we've been able to do to date is, um, aside from the advocacy, we've actually put in a bill. We have a, a sponsor for that bill. Her name is um, Honorable Tulilokwe Akondeshadipe. That particular bill is actually passed first reading, gone on. To pass second reading, I, I believe it passed the first reading uh, sometime in June 2020. Mm. It passed um, second reading on the 15th of December 2020, and now we're at the um, pop, we are the pop, the public hearing across the country. You know, supporting the bill and also trying to allay the fears of people that may not have actually keyed into it to actually ensure that um, this bill actually passes so that um, um, it can be signed, assented to by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And having said that, we met with the President a few times and he's actually reiterated within Nigeria and also outside Nigeria that he's actually in for it. He will assent to the bill as soon as um, the constitution is actually amended. The electoral empire, INEC, is also ready. They have five good models and um, they're still looking for, they're still trying to uh, decide the best model that's actually fit for purpose that will be implemented when this particular uh, bill is actually uh, passed and assented to by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Pre President Mohamed Buhari. And you've been attending some of those we uh, have been constitutional across, review yes, hearings. We have been across um, the country. Uh, myself, I've been, in a, I've been in Lagos twice, one for the House of Representatives and the second hearing for the Senate. Uh, we've been in Kaduna, uh, Mina, Jos, Akure in um, Ondo State, and um, other um, states across the country. So, um, what, oh, so, sorry, go on. No, go on, finish what you said. And um, the feedback, again, has been quite um, great um, for um, people that were not really into it. They understand it better with the presentation mm. that we've actually um, been able to put across. And we believe, and we strongly believe that um, this is, uh, it's not just a matter of um, if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when, and definitely it's going ahead as planned at this present time. But of course there have been other attempts to amend the 1999 constitution. They haven't exactly gone the way that many people would have wanted them to go in terms of the depth of change that they're expected. I mean, what is your sense of how this one is going? Well, I can only speak for any other bill. I can speak for the Nigeria Diaspora Voting Bill. Mm. And for that particular bill, that bill is actually gone as planned. It's uh, a bill that passed, like I did say um, um, earlier on, it, this bill is passed first and second reading, and it, and it was also approved for the public hearing. And mm. we're here now, and it's ongoing, 
and we believe that this will actually seal through and the president will actually assign to it like he has actually promised when he met with us right so, so on this particular one hmm. it, it um it 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 is going well as planned and uh, we're quite happy about it we're happy with the trajectory of this particular bill and the reception has been quite great uh, from all across the country so what are the provisions of that bill because i suppose the concern for people is the the potential for abuse um, in, in Nigeria itself, where you, the country is actually there and things are taking place, people are worried. I mean, people have issues about the, the elections and, and how, proper they are, how properly they are conducted, uh, you know, the, the, in terms of cheating and all kinds of things. How can people be reassured that when it is not in Nigerian uh, taking there place in Nigeria, that it's going to be a you know clean election somewhere for, else. For any election whatsoever, whether it's in Nigeria, United Kingdom, the uh, United States, there are, there are always concerns about elections, and there will be challenges. But for this particular one, we held um, a workshop in um, um, February 2020, where we mm. actually invited the uh, electoral umpire, which is um, INEC, mm. and um, they were quite. They've done lots of research with this. And um, they were quite um, specific as to how they were going to implement it with minimal challenges. So we believe in their capacity, and I, we also believe that they have the resources to conduct these elections outside the shores of Nigeria without too much stress or too much challenges. But they, they haven't been able to conduct a lot of elections in, in Nigeria. Well, I won't. I'll, <laughs> Inside I'll Nigeria, where they're based. Far, I probably won't go that far. But again, I know there are challenges with elections, not just in Nigeria, but also in the United Kingdom. Or, or, yeah, or but the, we, we always use but that one, to, to justify the fact yes. that we're not doing things right by saying that there are challenges in other places. Well, no, no, no. What I'm actually trying to point out is the fact that there will always be challenges, but we have the capacity and the resources to resolve those challenges. Right. That, that, but what that I'm curious to know is how are they actually going to do it? Is it going to be, because obviously they're conducting it in someone else's country. Correct, yes. Is that going to be done in association with British authorities? I prob I don't obviously or, I, or, or whatever I will, authorities I will, anywhere I else. will believe I will like, like I want to believe there will be some sort of cooperation with the home country. That's the uh, country of residents of these Nigerians living outside. Right, but, but uh, your, your primary concern but, but is just getting the bill it's actually getting the bill passed right. and assented to to the president. We do meet with um, INEC. I've met with um, uh, the prof, uh, that, that's the chairman of um, INEC a few times. Uh, we're still going to meet with him before. Right. And, and the bill so is essentially about um, the rights of people, Nigerians, Nigerians abroad, to take part in elections. To take in the electioneering uh, right. process and for their Nigeria, votes to count and basically. for their votes to count obviously i mean if you vote right. you expected that your votes will count so when do you think this thing might be through i mean it, would it be ready exactly in time ongoing. for the 2023 election it's actually ongoing no, i know it's speak. ongoing but well, when do you see the conclusion well it? we're actually hopeful that it will be part of the 2023 elections right. but again uh we are where we are at this present time and we're working with um, all the major stakeholders nitcom is also involved INEC is involved, the president is involved, and obviously the members of the National Assembly. Right. And it's actually going fine at this present time. And a big thank you to all the um, leaders of the stakeholders. Like I did say um, right. um, um, earlier on, the president has actually keyed into it. Okay. Um, INEC is also part of it. Okay. Um, well, Honorable you made Abike, that point. Uh, Honorable right. Abike Dabiri is also part okay. of it. You know, she's Prince also actually Ade supported Omole, it. And I'm, we're I'm quite sorry glad to about you. that. Yeah, it's okay. right. Go ahead. Thank you very much indeed, and he is the chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Voting Council and a member of President Buhari's APC party. Thank you. Thank you so much.